anytime you see news like this, you've got to ask yourself the question, who is CATL's biggest partner? Who is their biggest customer? Who is Tesla's biggest battery supplier? Well, it's pretty damn obvious. This technology is very likely to go into new Tesla vehicles for that exact reason that I just mentioned. If you're the company's biggest customer, then you make them a priority. Tesla's new Model 3 will have the M3P battery in it from CATL, as I said it would a year ago. This new technology that claims to increase charging speed in cold weather by 50%, how long will it be before we see that technology go into Tesla vehicles? I'm going to guess about this time next year. Hello, my friends. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans and I'm the Electric Viking. Sorry for the red face. Just been running trying to uh, stay fit and stave off the diabetes. Probably ate too much. The world's largest EV battery manufacturer, in fact, the world's largest battery manufacturer, period, CATL, says it has developed new materials that will improve the charging efficiency of lithium-ion batteries for use in EVs in cold weather conditions. This sounds subtle. It sounds like it's not a big deal, but it is. In fact, it's a huge deal because it's not a small increase. It's a massive change. CATL's chief scientist, Wu Kai, revealed that the company's newly developed electrolyte will deliver a 50% increase in efficiency, in charging efficiency, when the batteries are at a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius. That's minus four degrees Fahrenheit. But more importantly than that, and much more importantly than that, the reason I say more importantly is because most people are not sitting around with their EVs at minus four degrees Fahrenheit, is the fact that battery efficiency charging will improve by 43% under normal temperatures. So we don't know exactly what that means. How much faster does that mean batteries can charge? CATL's batteries can charge. We don't know exactly, but this could mean, I would suggest at least a 20% improvement in fast charging. Will that translate to Tesla's vehicles? Of course it will, absolutely. Remember, Tesla's standard range vehicles charge at a rate of approximately 170 kilowatt. This could put them well over 200. Wu did not provide Reuters with specifics about how the new electrolyte was developed. Of course, why would you give that secret away to your competitors? But he said, the company can mass produce an EV battery that can be charged in 10 minutes while offering 400 kilometers or 248 miles of range. So basically they're saying you can recharge a battery pack on average in, for only 10 minutes and give yourself an additional 248 miles of range, 400 kilometers. We're really getting to that point, aren't we, where you just say to yourself, there is not an advantage to a gasoline car, a petrol diesel car. Where is the advantage when you can do this in 10 minutes? Because most of the time you're not even doing this anyway. I mean, nine times out of 10, if not more than that, you're just going to be charging at home anyway. CATL's next goal is to develop an EV battery with 400 kilometers of range that can be recharged in five to seven minutes. Now, they're not saying 400 kilometers total range for that battery pack. They're saying that you can actually recharge that battery pack to give you 400 kilometers of range in five to seven minutes. So what is CATL saying? Why are they focusing on this battery chemistry? We're talking about lithium ion phosphate here, We're talking about lithium ion phosphate batteries with manganese, but also the Kirin battery or the Chirin battery. Uh, that's the battery that is basically a lithium turner battery, standard lithium ion battery, but it has the energy density of around about 270 watts per kilo meaning it is really not that far off. Getting to the point of being as energy dense as a solid state battery pack. And the reason CATL are saying solid state batteries are not the future, we're not focusing on them is because they're not really here. I mean, it's not a mass producible product and they're very expensive to manufacture. Whereas what the CATL makes is affordable. I mean, think about it this way, right? The new M3P batteries, 15% higher energy density than the previous model, previous batteries, same exact price. That's what the market needs. The market doesn't need some battery pack that's going to cost you $100,000. The market needs products that incrementally improve every single year, but either get cheaper or stay the same price. And that's what CATL is focusing on. 
Wu says that solid state batteries are probably not even likely to replace lithium ion batteries. He says the current lithium ion batteries and those using different types of cell chemistries are the real future of the EV industry. This comes despite Toyota making claims that it has a solid state battery pack that will be in its cars in 2026, which will cost 50% less to manufacture, way 50% less, and be able to be recharged in less than 10 minutes, all while giving you 745 miles of range. But remember, Toyota has been promising that since 2014. So they may be promising in 2027 that it'll come in 2031. Who knows? We've got no idea. So here's what CATL said. What I am sure of is no one is capable of mass producing solid state batteries in the industry currently. They claim to be able to halve the cost, which is very exciting and would be very disruptive. But I wonder what base they are comparing. That's my point here. I mean, where's Toyota's battery factory? Where is it? Where are all the production lines? Where's all the production equipment? No one seems to know the answer to that question. Improving the charging efficiency of EV batteries isn't the only breakthrough that CATL has made this year, says carscoops.com. In April, the company said it had the technology to build battery cells with an energy density of 500 watts per kilo, significantly greater than the 296 watts per kilo energy density of Tesla's current 4680 cells. Now, 296 watts per kilo is theoretical. They haven't quite reached that point yet. CATL believes their new cells are so advanced that they can power electric passenger aircraft. And they're right, because the reality is what we need, apparently, according to engineers, is 400 watts per kilo. So CATL is saying that their new batteries have 500 watts per kilo, making commercial electric aviation uh, a very, very viable possibility and something that will happen within the next five years. Let me know your thoughts on all this, but no matter what everyone says about solid state batteries, all the excitement that goes into them, I truly don't believe they're the future, primarily because what we have today is so good and so affordable and it just keeps on getting better. Thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye-bye.